Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. In the last update, the Großer Kurfürst, the Tech Tree German Tier 10 battleship, has been changed a little bit. And in fact, in fact, in short, what happened was she got her guns upgraded from the historical 420mm to the ahistorical 457mm, which never existed, even on paper. And she had her secondary uh, slightly reduced uh, in that the, uh, I think the precision of the auto secondaries has been reduced and she only gets the secondary overload one now. And that all in trade for a slightly longer reload and 457 millimeter main guns. So uh, has that changed the Großer Kurfürst? Has that made any difference? How does the ship play now? It's, this is mine. <laughs> this is my personal account. So uh, that's what we'll be playing on. And uh, I have done one thing. I, I used to play with the improved armor belt because um, I, 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 I got this ship when the only ship that had l really large guns was the Yamato. And now today you've got just a, uh, a massive proliferation of these very large guns. You've got the Shikishima, you've got uh, obviously Yamato herself, you've got the Vermont, uh, you know, you, you've got all these ships which have really big guns and uh, you have some more maps which are more sort of, uh, more sort of effective towards pushing, uh, like, like center cup maps, uh, like maps with small islands. So uh, where, where you where you can play in secondary range uh, because they are just generally either concentrated or give you give you sufficient cover. So what I've done is I've switched over to the secondary gun specialization. So my Grosser Kurfürst is now a fully secondary spe uh, spec chip, and I am using the main battery mod two and at uh, the secondary battery mod two for range and dispersion, and I am sailing with uh, Franz von Hipper who is currently at level 11 for the improved armor piercing cap shell and obviously for the back uh, for the better close quarters combat expert so this is a fully spec legendary captain historical camo grosso kurfürst <laughs> so my pride and joy sort of so uh, yeah let, let's try the ship out and see how things are going with these larger guns can she still play the same how do things work in the first battle we're out on hourglass in base capture mode. It's a uh, we've got tier nine carriers, and the enemy team has an Essex, Grosser Kurfürst, Montana, Kronstadt, Hargomo, and Sommers. So, with this change, uh, with the slightly less powerful secondaries, because the auto secondaries are a little bit less precise, and it is noticeable. Although with the setup that I have here with the legendary captain, not much so. Uh, they, they're still pretty much. Uh, pretty much laser guns uh, and with the, obviously the bigger the bigger main guns would you would you be playing less aggressively not really so for example in this battle here given that we've got um, Haru and Somers on the enemy team and it's not triple Shima or something I'm, I'm, re I'm reasonably comfortable and it's a carrier battle I'm reasonably comfortable uh, pushing around the right flank and I've got Ege with me here so let, let's see let's see what the two of us can can do together and what we're going to run into um, obviously if you're up against destroyers uh, the you, you're slightly you, you're slightly disadvantaged towards before okay there's Hargomo, we get some shots up uh, but the auto secondaries also are not particularly great if the destroyer doesn't sail in a straight line because they tend not to hit very well if that happens. So all in all, I think it's not a massive change. Okay, we've got the Kronstadt, uh, Kronstadt spotted and there's also the enemy goes a cool first. So it's um, it's double GK versus Kronstadt and Egir. Now, hopefully, uh, let's focus on the Kronstadt. We need to get this guy gone first because he's going to be easier to kill. Uh, just because taking the killing the Grosser Kurfürst is going to take a while. Now these guns obviously not greatly precise, but I'm calling out, so please, uh, please kill the enemy Kronstadt first. Now the Egir is, and yeah, the auto lock on is a bit wobbly there. The Egir is, um, he's not in secondary range. The Egir isn't playing that particularly smart. I, I would have much, much preferred if the Egir was going to let me go first. But that's what you can do with the 300% uh, Citadel damage and the, uh, and the. Um, uh, the new bigger guns. Now, obviously, the Egir uh, position fully on broadside to an enemy uh, Kurfürst and a Kronstadt is going to die. 
And that is very unfortunate because that means I'm going to be alone. What he should have been doing is uh, get behind me and let me tank and uh, just lend fire support from there. But, uh, well, it's unfortunately not happening. So we're going to need to kill that Kronstadt and we're going to need to kill him quickly. The problem is obviously I can't be in... I'm not in in um, secondary range, so now I'm taking fire from two ships, and we need to kill the Kronstadt first, which means I need to go bow in, and uh, and there's also a cruiser on my left, so I need to go bow in and kill that uh, Kronstadt before I'm going to deal with the enemy Grosse Kur first. So, uh, ta tanking position, okay, that, that, that was a bot Zal, so that's gone. Tanking position, and uh, we need to deal with the Kronstadt first, and uh, then uh, obviously use our first heal and then uh, get into a brawl with the enemy also Kur first, which is a relatively even fight, obviously. So we'll have to see how, much, how well we get out of that. But first, that Kronstadt needs to die. And hopefully that should be sufficient. Yeah, that's a dead Kronstadt. Okay, so meanwhile, I've turned my gun turrets around. And um, I, can, uh, I can start now uh, attacking the enemy also Kur first. Uh, he's got the slight advantage because um, I'm about 10,000 hit points down, but uh, let's see what we can do And obviously I only have my forward turrets on on target right now And I'm just waiting for my rear turrets to swing around and then uh, get the ship into a brawling position such that the auto secondaries can start opening up as well Engine overload up and now it's just a matter of uh, it's a matter of luck at this point uh, who gets the more who gets more citadels uh, who gets more fires he gets insta double fire so I need to damage control that from the auto secondaries I've got the overload up, so a secondary fire into the bow section, and then the main guns. I'm just trying to belt tank here his main guns if he's, if he's aiming low. I mean, at this distance, I think really it's just down to RNG, but I'm not sure if he can actually penetrate the belt. Uh, yes, yes, we can easily penetrate each other's belt, so it doesn't matter which angle we're firing at each other from. Uh, I've got a fire. He's got. He's got. He's been more lucky with the fires a little bit, and uh, a couple more shots into the bow section. Uh, we're, we're completely even on hit points at this point, and uh, this uh, this salvo could have done it. If I had gotten the Citadel here, that salvo would have done it. Um, we're still even on, on hit points. I've got my secondaries coming in. I've got a heal coming in. He's down to like almost no hit points. Come on, come on, come on. No, oh, he gets me and he's down to no, I don't know, it's like 10 hit points or something. That is just so lucky. And now it's three on three. Uh, at least he's a one shot now for the friendly Essex. So at this point, <laughs> I do get to commentate what my team is up to. We have a Montana who's on low health. We've got a Gearing and we've got the friendly Essex. The, uh, friend, the Montana is coming under fire from, from the other flank and the Gearing has run into an island. I'm not sure what the Gearing is trying to do. He's obviously spotted and um, he should... Some, it, it would be really lovely if the friendly Essex could have killed that... Uh, Basically, no health Grosser Kurfürst that I just left there. But uh, uh, the gearing is trying to dodge torpedoes and is having shots coming in from the Montana. So that was a nice dodge there. And it looks like the gearing is going for the carrier. Why is our Essex trying to snipe the enemy carrier when there is a zero health Grosser Kurfürst coming around the other side? Oh dear, oh dear. It's one of those games, isn't it? Uh, yeah, there he is. He's, got, he's healed up a little bit, but uh, Essex could have killed him twice over by now. But if he doesn't do that, then he's going to die. So uh, while it's nice that he's giving some support to the gearing, gearing should be completely capable of dealing with the enemy Essex. Um, gearing, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Uh, and now he's going to try and torpedo the Essex. The Essex is going to turn right, isn't he? Yeah, the Essex already in the turn. <laughs> Look, he's going to dodge all those torpedoes. <laughs> Oh dear, and now he can finish off the gearing with the secondaries, basically. And the uh, the friendly carrier is completely oblivious that he's got two battleships focusing down on him. Now, the, the enemy Essex is, uh, needs to die, and it looks like the, Monta the Montana now has to help out because the gearing has completely messed it up. Montana gets him, but our Essex is dead because, well, he couldn't have, he would have been dead either way, but he could have taken the Gorsa Kurfürst down with, with him about a minute and a half ago. And then uh, we would have been winning on points at this point because it would be uh, it would be one battleship versus a battleship and a destroyer, and all Monty and Gearing had to do was not die. So um, Essex is going to die, and now he realizes that the GK is there, but that's too late. The GK is going to kill him. There he goes, and 
Yeah, Monty, Monty, can, you can still do this. You just need to kill the Gosaku first. That's one salvo. You might be able to... I mean, Gearing is... What is he... Are you trying to cup with five seconds in the... Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're trying to win by cupping, aren't you? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well... <laughs> At least I can say Großer Kurfürs won this game. <laughs> well done. Uh, you got really lucky uh, that this worked out. But uh, the, the one thing that you can see is that uh, these 457mm main guns are absolutely shredding at close range. And uh, even even the even the armor and citadel protection of an enemy Großer Kurfürs can do very little against that. But uh, after this tragic letdown, let's do a second one. And here we are playing center control in cage, like I mentioned earlier. Games where you uh, can actually brawl quite easily. Uh, against uh, Christopher Colombo, Ohio, another uh, Großer Kurfürst, Hindenburg, a Gearing and a Harugumo. Um, yeah, this, uh, this might get interesting once more. But uh, we do have a Neptune and a Baltimore. Uh, no, just a Neptune, the Baltimore is a bot. So I'm spawning on the left flank. And uh, I just want to check what... That is the Baltimore, isn't it? That was a bot. So, yeah, that's the bot Baltimore. So I'm going to have to keep the left flank clean. And uh, because the Neptune is on the other side, so uh, we can probably get some sort of a crossfire going against destroyers in the center cup. Because that's one thing you can do with the Großer Kurfürst secondaries. You can effectively be bow in towards the enemy ships. You can tank a fair bit, and you can still get flanking shots into destroyers trying to um, trying to contest the center cup and hi trying to hide behind the island there. But um, we do have, we do have one destroyer, to, uh, and it's a Shima. So uh, uh, Shima's probably not feeling all too brave at the moment, but he is going into the capture circle to his great credit. Uh, I am spotted, so um, but uh, no one's currently targeting me. Oh, and we found Gearing. Okay, Gearing is not interested in the cup. So in that case, I, I still need to, because that, that bot is going to die, I still need to maintain, um, come on, give me a lock on the Hindi, there we go. I still need to maintain um, maintain position here because Gearing otherwise is just going to come around and that Baltimore is just going to die because obviously the battleships are going to just farm the bot because the bot is just blindly sailing around in the countryside. We've got Ohio back there, uh, who is also not in the capture circle. But uh, it looks like my team, at least the battleship line on my team, is getting in. And I don't know where the Harugumo is, but um, it looks like Shima is is uncontested inside the capture circle. Ohio is starting to shoot at me, but obviously now the bot is dead, so uh, the gearing is going to come for me. So while I can entertain myself getting some shots out into the center there and obviously shooting at the ships first that are actually capturing, and getting some pressure onto them. Uh, I do have to... Oh, there he is. Okay, so Gearing has um, made his position known. Uh, so I am going to get over to the high explosive. I'm sailing at half speed here, and I'm going to try and bait him into sending the torpedoes out already. Uh, over to H, uh, HE and uh, secondary overload active. There come the torpedoes. I've got the hydro running, so now I'm just going to full, um, full speed ahead, and I should be able to mostly outrun these torpedoes. The gearing panics, smokes up, fully broadside to a Gosa Kur first, um, and at this range he is within my hydro range, so <laughs> yeah, he's not. That smoke isn't going to help you. And uh, there he goes. So that's a dead gearing, and I have taken, a, I've taken a couple of. What happened to that torp last torpedo there? Uh, that was weird because I'm pretty sure I didn't take one more. But for some reason it still hit me and it has damaged my rudder, although not to the point that it doesn't work anymore. So I'm not sure what happened there. But uh, I'm down to 43,000 hit points and I've got an Ohio to play with. So this is not a problem, right? Because a Grosser Kurfus at 43,000 hit points can perfectly fine take on an Ohio, provided I'm not getting shot at from the center of the cup. And because uh, my team is actually holding the cup, and yeah, Neptune comes along to help. It's very nice of you, but you don't need to, I've got this. Um, I'm just going to go and rush the Ohio and uh, again help the team out by the, taking some pot shots at the Hindenburg from here. Uh, but now I think we're close enough that we can uh, we can give the Ohio our undivided attention and uh, and see what we can do about that thing. So yeah, Neptune is is uh, is guarding me here. It doesn't really need to. I mean, we don't know where the Harugumo is. I haven't seen him though, so far, so I don't know where he where he he's hanging out. But uh, secondary overload is active, and now we are just going to. 
Uh, we're just going to shred that Ohio because honestly, I am. Yes, Ohio has big guns, but uh, I am not super afraid of them, at least not at this distance. And uh, the Grosser Kurfürst oh, is a very, very tanky ship. So uh, even even without the uh, the additional module, uh, I can. And I've got a heal coming off cooldown, so now it's just a matter of uh, shredding the Ohio to bits. And yeah, the 300 uh, percent. Uh, Citadel bonus is also quite nice, so uh, I, I am I'm getting to like these uh, 257 mil guns, even though they are not historical, historically accurate. A couple more secondary shots from the 150s into the bow section of that Ohio, and then we get the guns around. And oh, he just survives. That means I'm going to probably take one more salvo. Yeah, there he comes, but that's fine. I can tank that on the belt, and that's a dead Ohio, which uh, means we've already won at this point. It just leaves the Hindenburg over there. Uh, wherever that Hogomo is, he might have been AFK, so in that case the enemy team was already severely disadvantaged because their gearing decided not to go to the capture circle, and if the other destroyer wasn't going for that anyway, uh, then yeah. <laughs> uh, good luck. Uh, but uh, yeah, so all in all, um, ha has the Großer Kurfürst been nerfed? No. No, I don't think so. I think, uh, yes, it's, it's unfortunate that we've lost the... Uh, that we've lost the other second, uh, the better secondary overload. I would have preferred that, honestly. But uh, the guns are good. Uh, the 457 millimeters, especially, obviously. I mean, you have to consider here that I'm running, I'm running a full legendary setup with this thing. But still, uh, they hit hard, and um, with the proliferation of uh, 450 plus millimeter guns or 18 inch plus guns. It doesn't matter that much anymore because everything like Kremlin and uh, and whatnot can can and will citadel you in a Grosser Kur first, even if you um, like no matter how good your uh, your armor protection is at close range. At long range, maybe not so much, but at close range and the ranges that the Grosser Kur first is fighting in, uh, it doesn't matter all that much. So having just more damage output and being able to kill enemy ships faster is the better choice at this point, in my opinion. Always, yeah, it's an AFK Harugumo. Okay, so yeah, well, we're just cleaning that up and waiting for the game to uh, for the game to tick down and for, waiting for my team to to sort that out. Uh, it's a it's a great ship. Uh, I I maintain it's still a great ship. Um, you do have to be you do have to know when to push, and um, and where to push. And, and you get into games sometimes where you just can't because your team decides that they don't want the capture circle and if you get in there, then uh, you'll be focused on. You can still be focused on, absolutely. It's not that this, this ship is in some way uh, invulnerable, but uh, it, it's a great ship and uh, still very, very dear to me. So, And I think they haven't necessarily made it worse. I think it's still pretty well balanced. So yeah, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.